Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about the immediate window, how you can use it to debug, test, and issue quick commands directly into the VBA editor in your Microsoft Access database. Today's video comes from a comment from Sandra from Norfolk, Arkansas, one of my Platinum members and handbook editor. She does a great job. She posted this in my captain's log this morning. She said, I ran a YouTube search for immediate window and nothing came up for Access Learning Zone. Oh no, we can't have that. That's my number one goal right now. If you search for anything on YouTube or in Google and one of my videos doesn't show up, I want to know about it. And she's right. I haven't done a video specifically on the immediate window. I have covered it in my developer course. We'll talk about that at the end of class. But let's learn about the immediate window real quick. Now this is for developer level users. So if you're not a developer level user and you want to be, here's where you start, Intro to VBA. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. And go watch my video on error handling as well because a lot of what you use the immediate window for is for debugging and for checking errors and stuff. So go watch this video too. These are both free. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those and come on back. All right, so where is the immediate window? It's actually more of a pain. You can make it a window, I'll show you how. Um, you go to design view, go to your code, any code. I got buttons up here to open up the code editor. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know this. But uh, any code, now down here, you can see I already have it open. Normally you don't see it and you don't see the project explorer. So these are this is what you get by default. They're up here on the view menu, you go to view and then immediate window, and it's right down here. And it's actually a pane, not a window. You can make it a window, right click on it and go dockable, and now it's a window. It's a full-sized window. You can click on that little buddy there to make it a normal window with the rest of these guys. But uh, I think it works better as a pane. So right click and then dockable, and it'll stick it back down the bottom. Let's maximize all these guys. Okay, so here's the immediate, we'll call it the immediate window, even though it's a pane right now. You can also press control G. I don't know if it's on there. Yeah, control G. I never remember all these shortcuts, but I, I was doing a shortcut a week before, I remember, but I, they get to the point where you only remember really the ones that you use on a regular basis. So if you use it, remember it, there it is. If not, I always go view immediate window. So what's it good for? Well, let's say you got a little loop here in this button, this hello world button. All right, a little for loop. Let's say we're doing, um, we're gonna dim X as long. We're gonna say for X equals one to 100 and then next. And now if you don't wanna print it out anywhere, you can use debug.print and that will print the value to the immediate window. Usually there's some other stuff going on in here, right? Other stuff. You're you know updating records or you're displaying something or you're playing sounds or whatever, who knows? But in here, we can just say debug.print X and that will send the output of that value to the immediate window. Ready? Now I'm gonna have to move these side by side so you can see them at the same time here. So we're gonna do this and we're gonna resize this guy like so, close that. And then save changes, yes. Let me move that over there. All right, let's open that guy back up again and hit the button, ready, go. And there it is. See, there's all your output and there's, they're all in there, trust me. Okay, so you can use this to display messages. Now I have my little status box. So for something like this, if I'm debugging, I can just go status, you know, the value is whatever, and oops, right? And then hit the button and it displays in here. That's something I built, but you can use debug.print if you want, if you don't wanna have my little status box. And yeah, everybody always asks me about the status box. I'll put a link to this video down below too if you wanna learn how I built this. All right, let's clear the text down here. I'm just gonna click down here, hit Control A and then hit Delete. It's basically like a little version of Notepad. You can just treat it like, you know, Control A to select everything, Control X to cut, delete, whatever you wanna do. Now, in addition to getting output, you can also use it to do input. You can actually ask it questions like what's today's date? Start with a question mark and then say date, open close parentheses, and it'll run it through the date function. See that? That's pretty cool, right? Or you can use it like a little calculator. You could say question mark, what is uh, five times eight? Enter, there's 40, okay? You can use it with known functions to see what something's gonna look like. Like, uh, let's say uh, UCase, right? UCase and then Richard, like that, and it'll convert it to uppercase. That's what the UCase function, any known function you can run through there. So if you wanna test it here before actually putting it in your code, you can. 
if you have a function you developed a little more advanced, I'm gonna go to my global module here, right? And I'm gonna come down here and make my own little function, right? Public function uh, return uh, x times two, let's call it x. I just call it x2. So you'll take an x as a long, okay? And then we'll say in here, return x2 equals x times two. So whatever number I send into it, it's gonna double it basically. Okay, so now I'll come down here and I'll say, what is return x2 of 15? Boom, it returns a 30, see? So you can query your own functions in here as well without having, a, yeah, you can make a button and do it and click on it. And, but this gives you a nice, quick, easy way to verify functions you're working on and make sure they're returning a value. If you wanna use one of your own subroutines, like my status function, all status function does is it takes whatever you send into it and it puts it in this box here. Okay, if you wanna run a subroutine, not get a value from a function, then just get rid of the question mark. I'm gonna say status, you'll even get the IntelliSense in here, right? Hi there. And then watch the status box over here when I press enter, ready? There it goes, see? It ran the status function with S and did all that. Okay, so you can run subroutines and you can query functions in here. You can also directly manipulate objects and variables. So the name of this box here is status box and it's sitting on the main menu. So watch this. I can say forms main menu F status box equals hi. Just like that, ready? Boom. See it set the value for me. Okay. And you can also query those objects too. So if I get rid of that and put a question mark in front of this, I can query the value of that box. It's hi. See, it goes both ways. Going back to that example we had before, which was this one, right? For x equals one to 100, do some stuff and then print x. If I click that button, okay. What happens if in the middle of this, you wanna query the value? Let's say I put a breakpoint on that, okay? And if you don't know what breakpoints are, you can set a point so that when you're stepping through, when you're running the code, you can then step through it. It's a little more advanced. I got a whole separate video on how breakpoints work. But basically, when you run this now, execution is going to stop here. See how it's yellow? And I can come over here, and now I can step through the code. See, so step through is one, keep stepping two, three, four, five, and so on. See, that's what stepping into does, or step over. I'm, I'm basically watching each step of it. Now, at any point now, I can come down here. Let me control A, delete. I can say, what is X right now? Question mark X. It'll tell me what X is. It's a nine. And while I'm paused like this, while I'm stepping through this code, let's say I wanna artificially inflate that value. I wanna say, all right, I wanna see what happens when X gets to 99. I don't wanna wait for it though. So all you have to do, again, delete everything and say X equals, let's go 95. Press enter. Now I've set the value of X to 95. Now watch what happens when I keep stepping. Look at 96, 97. So you can adjust the value of variables while your code is running with a breakpoint there. You just put a breakpoint on, and then when it runs, you can stop it and set the value. You could do the same thing with form fields. Okay? All right, let's stop that. Again, delete all this. You can run SQL statements down here. You wanna do something? Let's say, um, you know, your customers, okay, you got all your customers in here and uh, you wanna add one to everybody's family size, but you don't wanna take the time to go through and make a function or make a query and do all that stuff. If you know how to run SQL statements, you can do it right down here in the immediate window. All right, remember my family size right now is two. Okay, so I'm gonna close this, come right down here, and you can issue commands down here just like you're, if you were in VBA. You can say do command dot run SQL, or if you prefer current DB dot execute, whatever you want, update customer T, set family size equals family size plus one. You can put a where condition, whatever else you wanna do. Hit enter. Nothing appears to happen, but now watch when I opens up the customer table. Where's my family size? I was two before, <gasps> now I'm three, look at that. You just ran an action query right in the immediate window. That's pretty cool. I do this all the time when I wanna you know, mess with values in here, but I don't wanna have to go into the table and blah, blah, blah. Um, this does not work with select statements, by the way, just like you can't run a do command SQL uh, uh, select statement. 
So you'd have to actually use an update, insert, delete, that kind of stuff. You can use it to view form properties, report properties, any kind of properties, really. What is forms customer F dot record source? Okay, it's customer T. Uh, what is the current database's name? See, any, any property you can get in VBA, you can get down here in the immediate window. It's basically like you're executing code one line at a time. And the question mark just means return that value. Think of it like message box, but it, it's just down here, right? Control A, delete. So that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's a, that's the that's the immediate window or the immediate pane, however you want to talk about it. In a nutshell, if you want to learn more about error handling, debugging, the immediate window, breakpoints, all that stuff, Access Developer 15 covers all that stuff. We start out with some stuff, some moving objects between list boxes, lots of stuff covered in here. But in lesson two. This is what I call debugging level two, because I covered really, really basic debugging earlier in the developer series, just, just you know, to teach you the quick stuff, how to, you know, quickly check for errors and stuff. But in this video, we go through all the different stuff, right? On error, immediate window, watches, breakpoints, all that stuff. And then we go into multi-select list boxes, which everyone asked me about too, that's really cool. We can select multiple items. So again, that's Access Developer 15. I'll put a link down below if you're interested. But there you go. That's going to do it. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.